This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Uh, 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 uh. Competition starting to get thick, it's the click, so I hope you watch your A-game, A-main, no lames on the track when we unite and spit, this isn't A-game, better bring your A-game. Competition starting to get thick, it's the click, so I hope you watch your A-game, A-main, no lames on the track when we Hey now, it's the Mike and JD Show, and I'm your host, Mike Gilbert, and uh, conspicuous by his absence is one JD by God Oliva, so fans of uh, Brace for Impact know exactly what I'm about to say. I'm going solo on that ass, but it's still the same. We're talking uh, all types of wrestling. We're talking all wrestling tonight, um, and I'm also going to be taking uh, your chats. I'll be taking your super chats, your comments. Uh, I'm going to be dropping the link here in a little bit if anybody wants to just jump in and uh, and call in uh kind of like a drive time radio type of deal i'll go ahead and uh do that just because uh so jd is fine by the way i know he's had some trials and tribulations the last couple weeks but he's actually he's doing great uh he just happened to be out of town he found out at the very last possible minute that he was going to be out of town and it uh didn't allow me enough time to be able to line somebody up uh quickly so uh i just decided you know i've been doing brace for impact solo uh for like two years. Like uh, I was doing it weekly with JD, but I was always doing like the, I had like a weekend version of it where I would review. um, I would review like their pay-per-views and their monthly specials. I would just do that solo for the last two years. So that's like podcasting solo is like nothing to me. And of course, like Warren Hayes, he always does his stuff solo and he kills it. So I'm like, I can, I could do this solo, guys, um, but I would like you guys' help. So if you're in the chat, you're watching a lot on YouTube, or either the Voices of Wrestling YouTube or uh, the Mike and JD Show YouTube, drop a comment in there. Let me know what you want to talk about. Uh, I have tons of topics already. I have a, a, a bunch of stuff that I want to get into. Um, no crazy news this week, but a lot of fun stuff to be able to talk about. So here, uh, before I do all of that, I do need to make sure – that I go over to um, to YouTube really quick, and what I need to do is actually share the video link to to the YouTube show tonight. So let me do that. Put it out on uh, on uh, X X. Going to give it to you. Um, lots of hip hop references tonight. So I actually, um, dude, some dude tried to own me on Twitter earlier. You know, I was talking about this uh, Motor City Machine Guns fiasco that's going on, and like uh, you know, TNA you know, the the way their contract situation is and yada, yada, yada. This guy hits me up with a first off and then he tells me some bullshit. And he said, secondly, there's no citation on your tweet. Like I, like he is a fucking college professor. Uh, Sir, I don't need to provide citations for anything. A lot of times I'm just saying my opinion, but this specific instance, I was referencing, I was quote tweeting Russell world um, who had referenced the PW insider thing and then added his own two cents. So that was a citation already. So I said, well, first off, fuck that bitch on the click you claim. Uh, I let him know that you don't fuck around with uh, Gilbert. If you want to you know, call the cops and you see Gilbert, grab your Glocks when you see Gilbert. I don't mess around on Twitter, guys. Don't fuck with me. Hold on. Let me uh, go in, go in live now. All right. Sorry if uh, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts at, uh, no longer Google Podcasts. I think that's shit the bed. Um, then uh, sorry, sorry about the bad radio. Um, but uh, yeah, we are live right here on the Mike and JD Show uh, YouTube channel and the Voices of Wrestling Network uh, YouTube channel. Let's go to the chat real quick. We got uh, we got Ben is in the chat. Sup, Mike? You saw Impact? You know, no, I have not watched Impact. So. Let me give, give you guys a little bit of insight as to where I'm at. I'm on the island of Oahu in Hawaii, just outside of Honolulu. And right now it's actually 5.30 p.m. Uh, Hawaii Standard Time. So Impact comes on at 2 p.m. here. So at 2 p.m., homie's at work. Now, sometimes I have my own office. So sometimes I have my tablet with me and I can just pull it up on YouTube and watch it along with everybody else uh, while I get stuff done. My... My job is not really like task oriented, essentially. Like, so I do have some flexibility where I'm at. Um, and then there's just times where I'm just too swamped and I just can't do it. Uh, today was one of those days where I just like, it just wasn't happening. So um, I will be watching it very likely later tonight. And then I will have a brace for impact out this weekend. And then a uh, Jonathan messenger. Yeah. Hit him up. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
definitely, definitely hit them up. So again, if you guys are in the chat, uh, let me know what you guys want to talk about. I am all ears. Um, I what I, where I want to get started, and guys, I know a lot of you guys are TNA fans, and you want to hear me talk about TNA. Uh, I will talk about uh, TNA. However, I want to start with uh, Mercedes Monet. Now, you know Mercedes Monet is very much a star. I have a lot of respect for Mercedes Monet. I I did not get a chance to, to talk about uh, her debut last week on on this show because I was out last week because I had a family situation to deal with. But um, I want to go ahead and give my my thoughts and my opinions. Now, I thought that her debut last week was was pretty good. Not great, not great. I thought it was pretty good. I think her overall, overall presentation is amazing, and she comes across like she's the biggest uh, star on the show, a biggest female star on the show. I will say that. But like I would say, top five. She comes across like a top five star on that on that program. Um, I like the look. I like the song. Look, the song is very much like their way of prompting you to chant CEO, which I think is smart. Um, and but people are like, oh, she's so over. She's getting all these CEO chants. Well, it's like the song is prompting that. It's very much like Dominic Mysterio getting piped in booze. And then now, now it's like now they have conditioned the audience to boo him. And so now everywhere he goes, people think he's the most over guy on the show. It's because like they have been prompting you to boo. And that is smart. I'm not even saying that's a bad thing. Uh, so I, I kind of like what they did there. I, I had a similar idea for, for a TNA character that never never really panned out. So I happen to I happen to think that's a good idea. So um, I, I think the song is great. I think the look is great. Uh, her promos are dreadful. And that's not a new thing, by the way. I think a lot of AEW fans who probably – we're not paying a lot of attention to what she was doing in WWE because they're just, you know, they just don't like WWE, which is fine. There's a lot of people out there like that. Um, they're, they're now starting to realize why on Mandalorian, she doesn't say anything. Because every time she talks, she comes across as inauthentic. And I think that that's just her WWE training, you know? I, I think that's very possible. Or maybe that's just her. Maybe that's just she's just not comfortable in a speaking role. Um, she's had good promos before, so I, I know she's capable, but I just have not seen it. So, like I just didn't think the last week was a good promo, and I thought this week was even worse, to be honest with you. And then I thought that um, her her backstage skit with Willow and Chris Statlander um, also was not very good. And um, so we're going to need to see a little bit more out of her. And in fact, I, I thought that like the stuff with Statlander was like, okay. And then they pan like Statlander leaves and then she goes up to Willow and her and Willow just were, it was just awkward. Like no, no part of that interaction on television made me want to see that match. I want to see the match because I know that it'll probably pr be pretty decent. Like Willow's great. And I, and I know Mercedes can have a good match. Um, so I, 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 I want to see it. But nothing about the interaction made me all that interested in what they got going on next. So um, I'm going to pull up um, Brandon Thurston really quick because uh, I do want to talk about. So, um, you know, she is very much a star, but I think the big question is, is can she draw? And at this point, she is not a proven draw. Now, people are going to cite, you know, the number that they got in Boston, which is very good. Um, but is that sustainable? She's conditioned, not conditioned, but she has advertised herself be as being from Boston for a long time. And she's been promoted as such. She's promoted as such in WWE, although they shit the bed by making her lose in her hometown. I think it's like hell of a sell. You guys can correct me on that in the chat. And I think, I think it was hell of a sell, but she is very much like they, she's been a, a and people believe that she is a Boston creation. Now she's from Fairfield, California, but I don't think people are ready for that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I get it. she moved around a lot and I, I think one of the cities that she stuck with which is where she started training out of was like nearby boston so um i think for marketing wise you would probably like if you have a connection to both boston and fairfield you're probably gonna tell people boston i get that that makes that makes total sense but let like let's just not completely disrespect fairfield like um Maybe it's because I lived there for five years. Like I, I like that town. I like that city. Um, but yeah. Um, so I, 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 you know, is is she a draw at this point? She is not a proven draw, despite the fact that she did have um, a good number in Boston. 
right now she went over to new japan and we saw what she was able to do in new japan and it wasn't much like she she did very well in san jose and then uh, new japan came right back without her and they they did just as just as well right so um, they very well could have drawn those numbers that they drew in san jose with or without her and and we've seen that um now is she a draw in japan I, I don't know like stardom was doing pretty good before she got there um i know that it's a little bit in turmoil now that had nothing to do with her though um she had, you know she made her debut in the tokyo dome but like that didn't like nobody went there for her <laughs> like there's a lot of like you know new japan fans are not like big wwe fans so um there's no like real connection there so but i do i do want to bring up uh brandon brandon thurston's uh tweet here um let's go let's go share screen on this deal so um ratings now i don't really do like to do a lot of ratings talk um but i feel like a lot of people were talking about this today so it's topical so aew dynamite averaged eight hundred thousand viewers and a 0.27 in the 18 to 49 demographic which is about what they've been doing for the last two years and which is kind of right around what they did last week um and so uh in a preemptive slide immediately following dynamite for the first time ever rampage had its highest total viewership since uh, january 6 2023 more than a year ago and its highest so yeah rampage was right after dynamite um so uh and i think i think that's interesting too by the way that rampage was right after dynamite could that be could that be what we see in the future but um yeah so i don't i don't think that she's ever been a proven draw she's not yet she can be. I think she can become one. I think she needs to hone her her promo abilities and her backstage acting, which I would hope now that she's, you know, doing um I would hope now that she's doing more Disney stuff like Mandalorian that, that she would just get better. But I have not been too impressed with her interactions with people, but I do feel like she still is coming across like a very big star. And, that, and I think that is important. So that's kind of what she has going for her. Now in the ring, you know, she that ankle injury was pretty brutal. I think she'll be fully healed from that. But in the ring, like she's, you know, she's probably just as good as Becky Lynch, but I wouldn't say she's better. You know, um, I, I don't think that she's gonna tear it down bigger than like you know, they, like the they got so many amazing like male wrestlers. It's gonna really be hard to beat what they can do, and so she's just not there. So she's got to get over a different way, which is. She's getting over by being who she is, which is just kind of like the CEO, like a megastar. Um, that's what she is. She's just like a uh, uh, she's a gimmick, and that's I mean that's why it's pro wrestling. We have gimmicks in pro wrestling. She's very much a gimmick, um, and that's cool. Um, so, but yeah, so as of right now, she is not a she is not a draw, but she still very much is a star. Um, now let's see. We've got uh, Bobby Jones it says, uh, "Sup, Mike." I saw Impact tonight. Cody Diener just turned face. I don't know where it leads to my opinion. I wouldn't mind ODB come back and bring a, bring some sense into him. I think I think you'd be the only one that wants to see a full time ODB uh, uh, reunion there. Um, Russell Russell Red is Mercedes uh, Mercedes Builder Union, and I agree. What's up, Mike? What's up? What's up? And then uh, Tronzilla said, uh, "You're from the Bay. I'm from Oakland. Uh, no, I'm I'm actually from a little town in California called Exeter." It's right in between Fresno and Bakersfield. AEW happens to be coming up in Bakersfield here pretty soon, actually. I think like you're like so, like they just, they announced tickets. So I think my friends are going to it. I still have a lot of friends in that area, like Exeter, Vasilia, Tulare. Um, so yeah, they're 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 gone. But I, I currently live in uh, Hawaii. But yeah, um, I lived in uh, Fairfield, Vacaville for five years. My wife is from the Bay Area. She's from Concord, and I have frequented uh, Oakland a lot. I used to go to baseball games, football games. I saw Pearl Jam at the Oracle Arena. Yeah, I know, I know that, I know the area very well. Uh, the Legacy says uh, Demore flew too close to the sun. Unfortunately, got burned. If they're going to do uh, uh, PPA deals, they will basically be MLW. I've been burned so many times by TNA. I might stop watching. Might stop watching wrestling. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that you need to stop watching wrestling. <laughs> so, so far, we have not seen a difference on TNA since Demore's been gone. It hasn't been worse and it hasn't been better. It's been the same. It's been impact wrestling. It's been what it's been the last few years. So until the until the, the on-screen product shifts dramatically, I would say just stick with it. Uh, because I'll be honest, like I thought other than the main event, I thought sacrifice was pretty good. 
um, last week. And I thought No Surrender was pretty decent too. And I think Rebellion looks like a good card. So I would, uh, I would, I would stick with it. Um, and then Uncle Scope, Scope Wrestling in the house says uh, Tony Khan doesn't advertise. Yeah, you know, he needs to shore up that game. That That is very much like a weakness of his. And I thought this new hire that he had, I can't remember the guy's name. But at first I thought it was like Jeff Jarrett. And it turns out that wasn't him. I thought Jeff Jarrett was coming in to do all like the house shows. Um, and that's kind of like Raphael Morphy. That was like his gig too. And uh, Raphael Morphy left. And um, I think he went to go work in um, in Brooklyn for the Brooklyn Nets, I believe, or for like the arena. Um, I can't remember the name of the arena Brooklyn Nets played for, but um, so forgive me for that. But so he took off, and then they hired another guy um, that's like a former WWE guy that I think was like like doing PBR or something like that recently. And um, but look, look, Boston, like they they kicked ass in Boston, and then Toronto just last night. With Edge and Christian, or Adam Copeland, sorry. Um, Adam Copeland and Christian on top. You what did they do? What seven, eight thousand, maybe more? That's pretty damn good for a Wednesday night when they were like averaging uh, a couple of thousand a week for a little while, like two to three. And so anytime right now they get over five, that's a pretty damn good house for them. Right? And don't don't compare AEW to WWE because WWE is like on fire right now. They they can't even nobody's nobody's touching them right now. They're they're so hot, it is ridiculous. They were already hot before they brought in the Rock, and then they brought in the Rock, and now it's all anybody wants to talk about. Like there's uh, no nobody's cutting close to them right now. So I wouldn't even like compare the two. Uh, I think if you do, it's just not not even a fair con- not even a fair comparison. There's not even the same stratosphere. They're just not. Um, but. I think that um, I, I think the la- look last two weeks they've done decent local promoting with by you know obviously they didn't really say Mercedes Monet was going to be there but they tried to do everything they can without actually saying it that she was going to be there and I think like day of she kind of revealed it on Twitter um, and then of course Edge Christian like they promoted the hell out of that Toronto the Coca Cola Coliseum or whatever it's called and uh, they did very well there. Um, I will, we'll see a drop off cause it's a difficult thing to sustain, but they, I, I think they did very well. Um, and then legacy says, uh, yep. Barclays center is where the nets play. And then, uh, yeah. And then John Muse, what's up? Uh, what's up? Big John, John Muse in the house says that uh, Raphael wants to work for the Barclays. Yes. Yes, he did. Um, and then Bert Macklin, what's up Bert, Bert from, uh, Bert Macklin is, uh, he's a good dude. Uh, I believe Bert is from the central coast. If I remember our conversations correctly, and he now has a TNA podcast over on uh, the Body Slam YouTube channel, which I think that his show just ended. Now he's joining us, so welcome, welcome, Bert. And then um, Mike, uh, you see uh, the TNA uh, grab from AEW roster. Who who do you like to see TNA grab from the AEW roster that is not being used? You know, the name that I always said was Santana. That was the name, like that was that was my guy because I felt like when he was in TNA before as a part of LAX, I thought that he was the standout on the mic. Like Ortiz never really cut promos, but Santana could. And then when he got up to AEW, uh, I I always just I just always felt like he had like not not for AEW. I think that he would have to like work at it for a lot longer. But I just felt like if he were in a smaller promotion, he could be a top guy. He very I think he very well could. Um, so. I, I think you know Santana is now a free agent, so that's the guy that I, I keep I keep harping on. Um, as far as as far as other guys on that roster that's just that's not really being used that I'd like to see in TNA, you know, like Archer. Yeah, you know, I, I know he's like in his mid forties, but he never really clicked in AEW, and they really only like I know they used him last week, but for the most part, they wait till they go to Texas and they just bring him in. And so I just felt like Archer was always just underused, and I thought that it'd be kind of cool to see his career come around full circle. You know, he got a start in TNA as, um, as Dallas, he was a uh, kid cash is like sidekick Dallas. And then, uh, and then I think he went to Lance Hoyt, um, for a bit. And now he, and then he went to, he went to, um, he went to WWE and they called him Vance Archer. And then he went to, he went to Noah and he was, uh, or he went to new Japan, but he also worked in Noah too with, uh, the, the killer, the killer death squad. What was it? The Killer Elite Squad, something like that. Him and Davey Boy Smith Jr. is a fucking awesome tag team. They're a good tag team too. Um, but uh, as Lance Archer, so I, I was thinking that Archer Archer would be a good would be a good one. 
Um, I, I've just always kind of liked him. I, I, I'm a weird guy. I like, I like big dudes. So, um, yeah. Oh, Andy Johnson in the house says, um, uh, says, uh, yeah, Lance Archer was the guy in the rock and rave. Uh, dang, you bring memories. Yeah. Yeah. The rock and rave infection. That's what they were called. They would come out like that was when guitar hero was really, was really popular and you come out with like the toy guitars. So, um, and then, uh, and he says, uh, blade and butcher, AKA Mr. Peppers and, and Ollie and Ali for TNA. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, um, I, I'm one of the few guys. I kind of like that gimmick, the butcher and the blade. They don't really tear the house down with a lot of their matches, but I think that, um, they would, I think they would, they would, they would be a good fit. Obviously, you know, they have the history. Um, I, I like, I like a butcher, Andy Williams. He just has a cool look to me. He can't really work that well, but I think you can get around it. Like he can do like a couple cool moves, but he just looks like a dude that I would have watched on WCW Saturday night in like 1993. Like he looks to me like, like Bill Watts would love him. <laughs> it just, and I, and I, I want him to get the, the big Fu Manchu going again. I, I think, I think that looks awesome. Um, all right. So, um, Adam Copeland won, or no, I'm sorry, Okada wins the Continental Championship. Um, is is Okada winning the the Continental Championship? Is that beneath Okada? And I want to know what you guys think. I happen to think not. I think that um, that the belt doesn't make them. The belt doesn't make the man. The man can make the belt. Yes, it's a brand new title. Um, and I think that if he would have went to WWE, Okada, if he would have went to WWE. I do feel like a lot of his hardest of hardcore fans would have felt that if he would have won the United States title or the intercontinental title, they would have felt like that's beneath them. And I would have disagreed depending on the scenario because it's not so much about the title to me. It's how he's presented and how he's being treated. Eddie Kingston is one of their most over baby faces. The young bucks are the top heels in the promotion. So to me, he is being slotted very well they're not going to put him in at the top right away because they it's they're they're really top heavy right now i would say they're really top heavy and so i i don't think you were going to bring him in and put him right at the top and and he came in right at the same time as osprey and you know people get will get upset at this but i think osprey's levels above him right now honestly i think osprey is like levels above everybody i i think that there's no better wrestler in the world than than will osprey I think he his promo abilities. Uh, you know, he he seems like he's been cutting promos on American television for ten years already. He's that good. So you're not going to bring him in and then put him above Osprey right now. That's just not going to happen. Um, you're not going to you're not going to put him in. Put the world heavyweight title on him just yet. Um, TNT title was already locked up somewhere else. So I think they brought him in and they put him with Eddie Kingston, and I thought that worked. I really liked what they did there, and. Um, and now they're going to elevate the Continental Championship, and and I th and I think that's fine. I th I just think the Continental Championship the the concept is weird to me. So it was a tournament championship. So you win the tournament, you get the belt. In in my opinion, that isn't like you don't carry the belt the whole year and defend it. Like I, I think that it's like King of the Ring. Like you're just, you're just the tournament champion, or like the G1. Like the winner of the G1 doesn't defend the G1 belt all year. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think the concept is weird. So let's let's remove the the weirdness uh, of the concept, and let's just go with okay. But this is the title now, right? This is the title, right? So you got you got your world heavyweight championship, which is Samoa Joe, and then you got you got your international title, and then you got your continental title, and then like right below that is your TNT title. I would say, um, and I and I I I think. I think him having the continental title, all it does is uh, is elevate that title, and I think um, putting a title on him right away, I think is okay. Um, putting him right in there with Eddie Kingston, I think is fine. And then I like the fact that that match was good, but it was I like the fact that it wasn't a five star classic that went thirty minutes long. I like that part. I like he just he just hit his move once and defeated him. I don't think we get enough of that in AEW. In fact, I think everybody needs to cool it on some of these five star matches. Like it gets to be exhausting. Like look, trust me, I love I love great matches. Don't get me wrong. But did Will Ospreay versus Kyle Fletcher need to go fucking 30 minutes? Probably not, right? 
Osprey should just beat his ass in like 15. And he didn't need to hit a bunch of finishers to do it. I, I so I, I kind of like what Okada did with Eddie Kingston. They just had a really good match, very good professional wrestling match. Probably too many commercial breaks for some people, but I thought it was fine. And then he just beat him with a Rainmaker. Boom. And he cheated. He's a heel. He cheated. That's pro wrestling. So no, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that. Um, I think the presentation of Okada since day one, since he entered AEW, has been perfect. I like the sliding here. I think he's going to elevate the title. And then I think he'll move on to something else. I think when Osprey gets that belt and he is going to get the world heavyweight title, I think eventually we're going to get that match in AEW. And I know we've seen it several times in New Japan, but here it's different because Okada's working a different character. This is heel Okada versus a babyface Will Ospreay. And that's not something we've had before. So I, I I I like the dynamic there. They can actually work a completely different match than what they've ever done before, and I think that we we get there eventually. But you know, Okada is not a draw yet either. He just isn't. He's drawn Japan, but he's not like a big draw in the states yet, and that takes time. You got to be on TV for for like a couple of years, and the audience has to get to know you before you become a draw. It's not going to be instantaneous for him the way that it, I I think that I think. Osprey will be be a draw sooner than Okada will be in the states. I really do. Um, I think he's just going to get over quicker because he he just the the audience. You can tell the audience. What every time he comes out, they just gravitate towards him. They're chanting "Holy shit!" before his matches start. Right, like you don't you just don't get that with a lot of guys. You get that with him, and I think the the ticket sales and you know, television ratings we gotta you know television ratings are, are what they are there i don't think i think this is just what aew gets now and i i honestly can see like this time next year we're like 10 percent like I, it's just going to keep dropping year over year they're, they're they're just not going to you know un- unless they unless they hit something big like, unless they get like the rock right somebody like that oh, i just don't see it so i think like ratings got it meh you know, ratings are, are, are what they are. But I think ticket sales and pay-per-view buys, I think those are going to uptick and his merchandise sales are going to uptick um, at, at a pretty fast pace because he's just that good. Um, and then I think Okada will, will move slower, but I think he gets there too. And I think you you see it like catching up. Like like Steve Austin was over in 1996. He, really, he was a heel, but he was over in 1996. And the arenas loved him. They were carrying the signs. They were wearing his T-shirt starting in 96, right? Um, he had the match with Brett at Survivor Series 1996 that was, like, incredible. And then, like, 1997, he's the top babyface, but they still weren't beating WCW at that point. And ticket sales were picking up a little bit, but they just weren't they weren't there yet. But by 1998, you know, the, the ticket sales, the pay-per-view buys, and the television ratings had picked up to his popularity, the popularity that had been brewing for two years already. You know what I mean? So like, it just takes time. So I, I think, I think he's going to get there. I think, I think that he'll be fine. Uh, let's go. Let's go back to the chat. Um, let's see. And he says, how do you feel about uh, MLW lately, Mike? You know, I just watched my first MLW show. I dropped the review on Patreon on Monday. Go to patreon.com slash the Mike and JD show. I dropped it on Monday. I watched once upon a time in New York. Um, and then I actually uh, unlocked the video today free for a YouTube subscriber. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. And um, you know what? It was, it was a tough watch. Uh, the production's not great. They have not used that WWE money on production just yet. Um, but I think they got something brewing there. And I felt like there was too many angles going on at once. And it, it got to be distracting. But I liked I liked Matt Riddle versus Davey Boy Smith Jr. And I liked um I think it was Magnus versus Star Jr. I liked those two matches. So I thought that I thought that was good. Let's see. Um all right. Io says we should all thank Christian Cage for elevating the TNT title. Yeah, I think I thought he did a great job. And they and now and now you have Copeland as the TNT champion, right? A and Copeland, people say whatever they want about, about Copeland, but um, and I think it's hilarious, by the way. Like JD's not on the show tonight, so I'm just gonna make fun of him. I think it's hilarious that he's like Copeland fan. He's he's just edge fan all of a sudden. Because I'm pretty sure he just hated him when he's in WWE, but he's in AEW, he fucking loves him now. And he'll be the first one to admit that, he, <laughs> that, that that's very much just how they've presented it. It was never it was never a problem with Edge. It was how Edge was presented that he just didn't like. And so, but now he's in AEW. It's like, oh yeah, this guy's really good. So 
Um, I, I think I think having Edge hold that title is pretty cool too. But Christian did a great job. Um, let's see. Jonathan says uh, Eddie getting the belt while defeating the BCC was a story. He's not a great champ. He's a great chaser. Okada elevates uh, whatever belt he's got. Well, plus Eddie already has two other titles, right? He's got the Ring of Honor title, which doesn't mean shit, but he has it. And he's got the New Japan Strong. I can't remember which. I think it's like like open weight. I can't remember what strong championship, but he has those championships too. Which that was whole that whole thing was weird too. Did you guys catch that? I and mean, we we talked about it here, but I I didn't actually ever see it play out. You know, he was the triple crown champion. I thought all those belts were merging, and then like slowly afterwards, they started to try to explain. You know, he's going to defend the belts all individually, and he just kind of dropped the triple crown champion like gimmick, which is which is hilarious. Um. And then he only lost the Continental Championship. And so, like, the Ring of Honor title is still up for grabs. So he still has that, and he has a strong title. I, I just thought that was – I don't think they did a good job advertising that part. Um, you guys talk about Tony Khan not advertising. I don't think they did a good job of explaining that part, um, like, at all. All right. All right, guys. Um, I see all the TNA chats in there. I'm going to get to those. If you want to just – if you want to bypass everything, just uh, – just – do do super chat. I'm gonna get to. I'm gonna do the Motor City Machine guys. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Okay. Um. Let's see. Yeah. He, so Adam Cole won the TNT title. I thought. I thought that was awesome. I thought the match was awesome. Um. I do have to eat shit a little bit. So on overtime, uh, uh with a JD, we uh, you know, we were. I was making fun of JD for liking the Copeland promo, because JD went on this podcast and said, look. Look, I, I don't mind Copeland being here as long as he doesn't do kind of a spooky promo sitting on the chair under a spotlight in the middle of the ring. And that's exactly what he did on Collision last week. So he proceeded to do that. And then he debuts Janice, four by four with a bunch of nails sticking out of it. Total abyss ripoff. I'm like, oh, this is bullshit. I was like, I was like it's stupid because he's not actually going to use Janice. Well, much to my dismay, that's exactly what he did. He used Janice. He hit... Uh, he hit um, he hit Christian right in the nards for all of you eighties monster movie fans hit him right in the nards. Um, and then I was going to hit him again. And then uh, Christian said, I quit, I quit, I quit. So um, a lot of fuckery in that match it reminded me of a TNA match from like 10 years ago, honestly, not, and not in like, not in like a good or a bad way. Just kind of reminded me of that. I know I got a lot of TNA fans here in the chat, so i um, keep some TNA references alive for you. But um you just kind of just kind of with all the interference, you know, and like uh, the fuckery in the middle, and the like the brawling all over the arena, and then, you know, um, I thought it was pretty funny when Edge and Christian went out to the penalty box, and Edge took a Boston Bruins jersey off of a dude like a plant in the crowd, and then he start, he put like part of it on Christian's head, and then Christian just like started to put the jersey on by himself. The the camera got it. It was pretty ridiculous. Um, I thought I, I, I'm making fun. That's funny. And uh, and then of course Copeland puts on the Maple Leafs jersey, and then they brawled in the penalty box, which I and they got a huge pop. And I think it ended up on NHL television too. I think like one of their post shows did it. So uh, I I thought that was pretty cool. So I I like I like the match. Um, I I really enjoy. I like Copeland as the TNT champion. I think that's really cool. Um, and now I you know now to the main event. This is what you guys have all been waiting for. Uh, in fact, if you guys want to talk about this, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put the link here in the chat. If you guys want to have your say, you guys can talk about whatever you want. Just hit that link on your cell phone. If you're watching on a device, you're watching on a computer or whatever, it's easier if you have your cell phone. If you're on your cell phone, you don't have to do video or nothing. You can just use it like, like you're making a phone call. You just hit that link. It'll pull up into your Safari browser or depending on you know whatever whatever type of phone you have. I have an iPhone. Whatever type of phone you have, it should pull up in your your inner browser and you can just call in and then uh, you can call in, have your say with me if you want. If not, just drop in these chats in here. Uh, Kings uh, first and skull. You know what? I am going to answer this question despite the fact that the Minnesota Vikings beat the hell out of the 49ers last year. And I really think that it was the Vikings that ultimately got Steve Wilkes fired. I really do. Cause they, they embarrassed him and they opened up a hole in his defensive play calling ability. Like they, they saw that. And other teams started to use that. And then we saw that against two other NFC North opponents who were clearly were watching that game very closely. The Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions used similar game plans against the 49ers. And the Detroit Lions damn near won that game. Now, the uh, 
the Chiefs did not exploit it. Like, he did a good job against the Chiefs, but I think the cat was out of the bag at that point. Um, but I will answer your question. I, yes, and this is Tyler. I kind of assumed it was you, Tyler. I know you have a, a Minnesota Vikings podcast. So he said, thoughts on the Motor City Machine Guns possibly being free agents. Um, and that's the next topic, and I think we're going to spend some time on this one. I, I want to hear what you guys have to say. So if you guys want to click that link, go ahead, or just drop a chat, um, drop a chat in there. So I, I don't. I think they're going to be. They're definitely going to be free agents. So here's here's what's happening with um, with the Motor City Machine Guns. The contracts expire at the end of this month. Now PW Insider is reporting, and I think Sean Ross Sapp has like followed up with it. And I know a guy named Russell World on Twitter also talked about it. And I think it was validated by Sapp that um, they were offered um, per date deals going forward. And um, so it is possible that they will still be hanging around TNA, or it is possible that they will not be. So we have not heard definitively whether or not they're going to be sticking around a little bit because they could very well work on a per date appearance, which is the type of deals that we've seen a lot of other people have. Like Matt Cardona was in TNA for like two years on a per date. Um, Bully Ray was on a per date for like a year, like a year plus. Um, I get the feeling that's what Nick Nemeth is on, right? So they have a lot of handshake deals with a lot of people. And so, um, so I, I think that that could still be a thing. However, in my opinion, the Motor City Machine Guns are TNA institutions. They are kind of part of the backbone of this company. If you go to a TNA show, you go because you know the most Motor City Machine Guns are going to be there. Right, even if they're not like the the in the main event or like the top draw, like that's part of the TNA experience. Is that it, that's part of the appeal of TNA? Is that one of the, in my opinion, one of the better tag teams of all time is is going to be there? And a tag team that never really got their just due, they never really made the big money. Kind kind of like the Briscoes, honestly. You know, the Briscoes were great, so great forever, and they just never they just never made it big. They did they did well in Ring of Honor, but they they never really got those big paydays. They never made it like the Bucks did right? They're contemporaries. Um, I, I think, I think like in the ring, um, not overall presentation, I think the bucks are above them, but I think just like in the ring, like technically proficient and, and the things they can do, I think they can hang with the bucks and they have, they like you, when you watch the young bucks, you see a lot of the motor city machine guns in them. You can tell that they were a big influence. Right. And I think that if, if, um, I think if they had a run with FTR, I think that they would be classics. I really do. If if they were if they were put into AEW right now, I would probably slot them right behind FTR and the Bucks. Uh, I put them above Acclaimed, put them above uh, above the Ass Boys. I don't know what's going on with Claudio and Moxley. They're not in the tournament. I don't know what's going on with those guys. I put them above Private Party. Obviously, put them above Top Flight. Um, all all those teams. I I I would slot them right in behind the Young Bucks and FTR. So I, I think they could do very well there. Clearly, Tony Khan likes them. He did bring them in at one point, but he it was at a time where they were still like they were still TNA talent, and so he didn't put them over, and he didn't really kind of treat them very well, according to like Motor City Machine Guns fans, right? Like I'm sure they were happy as pigs and shit to be able to be on that pay per view. It didn't do anything for them in the long run, but at least it got them in front of a lot of eyeballs to where they could you know, like sell more gimmicks and shit. So, um, I I. I, I could see them doing very well in AEW should Tony Khan pick up their deals, should Tony Khan sign them. Um, now, you know, could they stay in TNA? I, I think they could. I don't think that they're going to resign because TNA is not offering them like full-time contracts or offering them per date deals. Um, I think the sad part is, is they're missing rebellion and rebellion is back at the Pearl at the Palms. And we're looking, you know, they're going to try to get 1,600, 1,700 people in there. And I don't think that you get there without the, uh, without the, um, the Motor City machine guns. And they're also, you know, they're, they're doing TV tapings in the same venue. And I think you need the guns to be there if you want to sell more tickets. Not that they, not that there are draws cause they're not, they're not, they're not draws. But I think that if, if like you're a hardcore TNA fan, which is who they're, they're pulling their audience from. That's, that's part of it, right? If you're a hardcore TNA fan, you want to see, you want to see them, you want to see the machine guns. And so, and that's that's the sad part that this new regime does not value the machine guns. Now, there's a rumor going around that um, that Scott Demore had kind of promised them like a, a a bump in pay should they resign. Like, hey, hey, look, you sign this deal, and then on your next one, you know, next year we'll have a bigger budget, and I'll be able to bump your pay up. Well, he got shit canned, and so that's completely out the window now. So, 
Um, and that's disheartening. Look, and I Demore them them leaving very much. I get the feeling has a lot to do with Demore because Demore is their coach. He really is. He's the one that brought them in. He's the one that kept giving Shelly all the chances <laughs> every time he would like leave. Like he, he would just always bring him back. He put the title on him when, in my opinion, he should not have. That title should have stayed on Macklin, and I'll fight anybody. Um, title should have stayed on Macklin last year. And people are like, and then when Macklin's deal was coming up, and I think that Macklin's another guy, his deal expires in May, and people are thinking that uh, that maybe he was offered a per-day deal. And if you're Macklin, you don't take that deal. That's beneath you. You don't want to get treated like that. Now, other people want the per day. They don't want a long time. They don't want a long term deal, right? Like Cardona, he just like they offered him full time contract and he turned it down. And they they could they could like he he could have had that. He just didn't want it. He likes the flexibility of being able to do else do other things. So um, Macklin is a guy I can see going back to WWE quick or go to AEW. I, you know, I really like to see him get a push there. I I don't you know they're so top heavy right now. I just don't see him getting getting past a certain level. Unfortunately, um, but I, I could see him having a really good run in NXT, like getting another chance there. If uh, you maybe right right the wrongs of his the previous time he was there, I could see that. But um, you know the machine guns, if they don't get picked up by AEW, I don't. You know I think I you know NXT, I I don't see that as a real possibility. I let me let me rephrase that. I don't think it's a probability, but it is a possibility. And if they did bring them. They would be like the perfect guys to be able to come in there and teach their young talent because that's what they're good at. I, Alex Shelley is like a full time coach, right? So um, I, I think I think that um, that that could happen, but I I don't really see it. Again, it's all possible, but who knows? But if you're a TNA fan, the fact that they're missing Rebellion and the Rebellion tapings to go to Smash Wrestling in Toronto should should tell you that they're probably not coming back at this point. Probably again. There's no absolutes in pro wrestling. They're they're probably not coming back. That's what uh, that's what I would say. Um, ben says, Mike, uh, what happened to Wheeler Yuta in AEW? Uh, somebody could correct me, but I think he's hurt. We haven't seen him in a while. I think he might be hurt. I uh, that that or not, I'll have to look that one up for you. Um, but if you guys are asking me like inside information on stuff, I'm like I'm not the guy. Like I I don't I don't have these like inside sources. Sometimes like my friends do. And they tell me shit, but I don't go like poking around, like looking for inside inside scoops. It's just not me. Um, let's see. Um, so I think this is a response to uh, earlier. It says uh, TNA allows wrestlers to keep gimmicks and names when Cornette convinced them after the broken hearties. I don't know if Cornette had anything to do with that. Um, but yeah, so after, so here, here's the, the story, what they're referencing. The Motor City Machine Guns. Alex Shelley has actually filed the trademark for it. So he's going to have the trademark for it going forward. Um, could TNA contest that? I'm sure they could try. But after what happened with the Broken Hardys, they actually were just starting to hand over all of the the, li the likenesses and the IP to people. Like the EC3 was a TNA creation, but he went back to WWE and he was EC3. And he's EC3 in the NWA. So th that is kind of what they do. That's kind of how they... Uh, how they bring people into their company is by saying, Hey, look, if you come over here, you, you know, we put a gimmick on you, you get it over, you can keep it when you leave. And so I, I don't think the TNA would try to contest that. And um, I think it's smart by Alex Shelley to trademark it because it, say, say they did decide to go sign with NXT, right? Say, say they did WWE would try to take it from them. They would, they did that. Remember they did that to the Dudley boys. They bought ECW, so therefore they had the rights to the Dudley Boys. And when Dudley Boys left, they had to go. They went to TNA. They were Team 3D, right? Despite the fact that they had started that gimmick in ECW, something they created. So, um, you know, the bigger companies can't be trusted in that. But I think TNA kind of just lets that happen. Um, let's see. And then John Mew says, uh, "Yeah, Wheeler Yuta is her. Yeah, that's what I thought." Um, Jameson Burns says, Mike, how about Steve Macklin in New Japan as the leader of Bullet Club take Finley's role? You know, Finley just took over that role. So I don't think they're ready to move on from him just yet. Um, and But I think that um, I think that Macklin would do very well in New Japan. I really do. Problem is, problem is, New Japan not paying a lot of money right now. And Steve Macklin is in his, like, early 30s and probably wants to be paid. So... 
Um, I but could he work dates there? Yeah, I, I think I think New Japan should try to bring him in for some dates. I think he would fit in very well. He can hang with those guys, hundred percent. Um, speaking of New Japan, I want you to get you guys' uh, comments on this. Uh, Yoda Suji. Oh, Yoda Suji won the New Japan Cup. He defeated Hiro- Hiroki Goto in the in the main event. Um, you know, Yoda Suji should have won this. You know, should have been the guy starting last year. And it looks like they're trying to get behind him. And thank you guys for breaking up New Japan because I wanted to get to this topic. So tell me what you guys think. But um, I thought I thought Yoda Suji they should have really got behind him last year, and they just never did. And um, I, I think they wasted a lot of his time. And so now that Okada's gone and Osprey's gone, now they're kind of being forced into this to where they actually have to start pushing this guy now. But I think he he's the guy going forward. I think he's the guy that beats Naito for that title. I know a lot of people think that it's going to be um, John Moxley, and I very well could. Uh, hold on, swig of water for the working man. But I think that um, very much, very much felt like uh, there's a shift in uh, New Japan right now, and that we're going to start seeing the Yoda Suji era going forward. Um, but I thought the match with Goto was very good. Um, and uh, Tronzilla, it says uh, Suji versus. Goto felt like the 2014, 2015 era of New Japan. It was great. Yeah, I I, th- I thought it was really great. Um, IO Production says uh, Zach Saber Jr. says uh, Zach Saber Jr. should be the IWGP World Champ this year. I like Zach Saber Jr. I don't know that I like him as the World Heavyweight Champion. Maybe that's controversial, but I I happen to like him very much. Um, and if I were New Japan, I would be leery of any Gaijin going forward that has worked in AEW recently. I, I'm not, not casting any stones there, but I just think that you kind of see a pattern. Um, I think this year's Forbidden Door with CMLL and Stardom and uh, New Japan and AEW, I think is could be a preview of what the AEW roster looks like in 2025. And I'm just saying that just because that's just kind of the way it's been, right? If you take a look at the last couple of years of Forbidden Door, um, as some of those contracts come up, you know, they, they're like, they like that lifestyle. They like going to the, the big AEW shows. They like the way they get treated. And I, and I guarantee you like Tony Connell, he'd pay well. He probably like, he's probably not skimping on a hotel, right? Catering's probably pretty fucking good. So when they're coming over there, I was like, oh shit, I could have this. And their contracts come up and you know, Tony's like, yeah, come on over. Let's do it. Wait till the contract's over. Um, but I, I, I could, uh, um, I, I don't know. I don't know if I like Zach Sabre Jr. as the IWGP champion. Uh, I, I, I dig it. Um, let's see. Here we got, we got Manny K. Uh, Mike, what if Motor City is the last entrance in the ladder match? Um, am I missing something about a ladder match? Did I miss something? You guys educate me on that. What ladder match is uh, Manny K referencing here? Um, and then IO Production says, uh, uh, what's up with Conan, Mike? TV deal, AAA talk? Um, Conan has been talking about a TV deal for 30 years. <laughs> every, every time he gets a gig in a triple a Conan seems to tell people that, um, that there's going to be a TV deal down the pike. Now they did just sign a deal with TNA, which I don't know if that was a real thing or not, because we haven't really seen other than Laredo kid. We haven't seen a single uh, Laredo kid and, um, Vikingo, right. But Vikingo's hurt. So we since Vegas we have not seen any AAA talent come over. So I I don't know I don't know what that was all about. I think that was more just like, hey look let us have Vikingo. We'll, you know, told the promoter, told Dorian, hey come on just let us borrow Vikingo. We'll put you over in front of the audience, right? And he fucking ate it up. So kind of cool, <laughs> but um, yeah, TV TV deal for AAA. Like Lucha blog, follow Lucha blog on, on Twitter. And he kind of makes fun of, uh, makes fun of him. He's, he's been saying that forever. If they were to do a TV deal, you know, maybe, maybe access, you know, access has done uh, a deal with them before. If you remember when Anthem bought access, the first show that they produced for, for television, uh, Anthem owned access. The first show they produced for television, the wrestling show they produced for television was a triple a at the Hulu theater in New York city. It wasn't. It wasn't impact. It wasn't like a month later. Impact was on, but they did. They did a show. They did a pay per view with AAA, and then the following week it aired on Access on like Friday night or something like that. So the history is there. 
they could they could do it. Who knows how? I think the New Japan deal runs up after after the end of this year anyway. So who knows where that's gonna go? But um, you know, there 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 could be something there. Who knows? Uh, I think Access TV is gonna rebrand to Anthem TV here pretty soon. And um, but the guy that they just hired to take over as the uh, as the vice or the president of uh, television there, president of Anthem, he's he's a guy from MTV. So I think we're gonna get more like more music type stuff going forward oh hold on let me sorry about that guys my light my light was busted but now it's good so yeah i i think that that's what we'll get going forward um so tk takes all the new japan people uh yeah uh all of, i mean he's got a lot right jay white uh <laughs> jay white will osprey okada like like three three of their biggest names he's he's got so it's not like it's yeah, you know, I'm not saying that for no reason. Now I'm not saying he's doing anything uh nefarious. He's not. It's just business. Their contracts are due and they want to come to the States. Before Jay White came over, you know, he was working impact dates because he just didn't want to go back and forth to Japan anymore. He was like living in the US full time. So it was it was inevitable with him. And then Osprey, Osprey got too big for them. He really did. And um if Tony didn't sign him, WWE was gonna sign him. And the same thing with same thing with Okada. If Tony didn't sign him, WWE was going to get him. So this is the way it is. Like that once once he said that he wasn't coming in, Tony had to get him. So um, so uh, looks like they're talking about. So I guess there's a Mania tag match. Um, I'm not really up on it. I'm going to get more educated because I'm going to do a Mania preview here pretty soon. But uh, could could the Motor City Machine Guns be in that Mania tag that Mania ladder match? Um, you know what? I think that if they got brought in for that the lack of a pop would be deafening and that's not a knock on motor city machine guns they have just never been like on tv there and they've never you know they, they were on tv and on tna for a long time when tna was getting a lot of viewers but they were never like a, a top featured act they just weren't chris Sabin was a world champion for a little bit but that was more of like a hey let's this will be fun Right, they did the same thing with Austin Aries, right? So, um, so I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. I, I think that if uh, if they did go there, they would, they would work through the, uh, they would work through NXT. Um, let's see, TVG says I miss uh, Melissa Santos doing the commercial break spots uh, when they were on Twitch. Yeah, I miss Melissa Santos on Twitch uh, doing TNA, uh, not knowing how to use her technology. That was my favorite part. Um, and John says, Mike, you see uh, Penta and Ray Phoenix tease bringing back the Temple stage. On April something, I have not seen that one. Was that in uh for Lucha Underground? Was that for AAA? Um, I know I know that Court Bauer has doing kind of a knockoff Azteca Underground and MLW. You brought that back, uh, which I talked about recently. Um, so I got this note in uh, the Voices of Wrestling Discord. So if you guys are not a member of the Voices of Wrestling Discord, um, hit up Discord, search for Voices of Wrestling, become a member there. It's free. Sign up for free. We have the full TNA thread in there. So if you're a TNA fan. And you want to um, ask questions to to a lot of the people that work for Voices of Wrestling? They pop in that thread and they they chat TNA with folks, and it's kind of cool. Um, and so Swagga Mice in the TNA thread asked me this. So here's what here's what's confusing to me: Hard to Kill was a major success, and the company presumably presumably made a lot of money. Why reverse course and start cutting the spending now? Isn't the incentive to at least try to keep the momentum going? I agree with you on that one. I agree with uh, I agree with Swagga Mice. Um, so yeah, I, but I think that, I think the decision was made before hard to kill. I think they knew that this is the direction they were going because they wanted to put everything under the Sissioni guy because year over year, TNA is asking for more and more money, but they're not getting a return on investment. And then now this whole thing hard to kill looks like it's, you know, it breaks records. That's the biggest pay-per-view in the history of the company, not just Anthem owned like ever. It beats Samoa Joe versus Kurt Angle, according to Dave Meltzer. And so you would think they came with a lot of cheddar, right? That would kind of soften the blow. But it it looks like, you know, now we still have not yet to see, you know, crazy, crazy budget cuts. We, we have not yet seen it. But I think the first domino to fall is the, and BQ said this on his podcast, I think the first domino to fall was the Motor City Machine Guns. So um, that's just, that's just the way it is. So, um now, if they continue now, if Rebellion does very well, 
and Rebellion has Nemeth and Moose at the top of the card. If that does very well, maybe they're like, oh, hey, you know, maybe we can just start recyc- recirculating some of this money back into it. Maybe we can sign the guns. Maybe we can sign Steve Macklin. But, you know, time is going to tell. Steve Macklin just lost twice on TV, and we already know what that means. Um, let's see. What fixes AEW's uh, tag team division? Um, you know what? I, I think AEW had the best tag team division out of any promotion anywhere for a long time. And right now it's pretty stale, you know, staying in Darby left and they didn't lose the titles. Um, and I agree with that decision, but I think, you know, um, and then the, the tournament to follow it up, I don't think is a very good tournament. I don't like the format. Um, I would have liked to see them bring in some like, like more outside teams, like kind of do like a big, big, like, you know, Crockett cup style tournament, but they didn't do that. Moxley's doing his thing in Mexico, which I think somebody said in the chat. Moxley's doing his thing in Mexico, so Moxley and Claudio aren't in the aren't in it. You know, I don't know how much you can get behind FTR right now with Cash Wheeler's um, legal troubles. I, I don't know how that's going to work out. Doesn't look good for him though. So, um, so I don't know how that's going to work out. And then you know, Ricky Starks and uh, W. Morrissey, Big Bill, they're a good team, but you know, they're not the Young Bucks. They're not. You know, Penta and Phoenix, I, you know, Phoenix has been hurt. So that's been, you know, once they get healthy, maybe they get back into the mix a little bit. But right now what you're seeing is a lot of makeshift tag teams. Um, they're, they're tag teams for the, they're creating tag teams for the sake of creating tag teams. I think like Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta were like a team this week. It's like, what, why, why are they like, I know they're part of the, the gimmick, but come on, you know, I, so I, I think more like full-time tag teams that people can take seriously, the better. And right now they just don't, they just don't have it. And then like their young tag teams that they signed in the early days, like top flight and like, um, you know, private party and, um, you know, bear country and, uh, some of these other guys, they never got any better. <laughs> so like they came, they came to AEW and they're like, okay, we're good. I can stop learning. They, they just never improved. Like they had a couple good matches with the young bucks in the beginning. And then that was it. So I think I think those guys need to need to go and uh I think you should send private party to um I think you should send private party to like New Japan and have them work like the 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 junior tag league and then send um top flight over to Noah or something like that and work a tag team tournament there and like you know get get these guys better get them more seasoned because right now if I feel like they're all resting on their laurels that is my opinion like these younger talent in AEW a lot of them um, I, I, I think that, um, you know, in the territory system, they would have been sent, like if they were in mid South and like, they got a little bit good, but they got stale, they'd go to Memphis for a little bit and then they'd come back. Right. Or they'd go to Florida and then they would come back. They'd learn a new hold. Like, I think some, some of that stuff needs to happen with them too. But I think if they brought in the motor city machine guns, I think that's an immediate spark. I really do. Um, let's see. Um, Mike, how you feel about uh, about the AEW roster of TK get more New Japan guys? You think it's uh, best you send some uh, people? Let's go. I how do you feel about the AEW roster? If Tony Khan gets more New Japan guys, you think it's best he sends some of the people he lets? Go? Oh, so if you should send some more people over there? Well, look, you know we're, we're seeing um, we're seeing John Moxley. He's wrestling Naito at Windy City Riot, and I think it's very possible that he is, becomes IWGP champion. Windy City Riot is selling a lot of tickets, and it's not selling that many tickets without John Moxley. I can tell you that. And Eddie Kingston's on that show too, and it doesn't sell that many tickets without Eddie Kingston on the show. So he absolutely is sending people over there. Um, I'd like to see him send some of his young talent on, on an excursion over there because he's got way too many people on that roster, and they're not getting any better. Like ring, like them doing squash matches on Ring of Honor is not a way to get better. It just isn't. They need to tour around and learn how to sell tickets. They need to turn around and learn how to draw money, and they're just not doing it right now because they are fat and happy. That's just the way it is. And I'm not just—I I know I singled out like three tag teams, but it's a—it's that way with a lot. You know, there are exceptions. Like Sky Blue works everywhere, and there's a reason why she's getting better. I still think she stinks, but she's getting better. Right? She's very young. She's going to get better, and you can tell it because she's got a work ethic. It's she's got a work ethic that I can respect. Right? Some of these other people just don't have it. They just don't have it. Um, and he says, AEW got to open a wrestling school. We need a character back in pro wrestling. Man, I well, I mean, they have access to wrestling schools, they do. Um, you know, Dustin Rhodes has a wrestling school, QT Marshall has a wrestling school. Um, 
You know, I think they saw people going to the Nightmare Factory. Uh, what's his name? Pat Buck, a wrestle pro out of New Jersey. That's where MGF and Chris Statlander and Bear Country, that's where they all came from. So they have the access to it. Like some of these talents are just kind of living off of the fact that they have all these big stars on top and they don't have to learn to get better. That's like they're, they don't even want their spots. Um, oh, no. So Tobin says, no, Mike, more TK bring a new Japan. You think it's best he let wrestle, wrestlers go from their contract? I, I think right now, Okay, so I'm getting I'm currently getting my MBA in human resources, right? And learning how to do run a business and learning how to do all that stuff. If if they were to hire me, AEW to hire me right now, I would go in there and I'd fire like 50 people. <laughs> I would do like right away. And top of that list would be Chris Jericho. And I and I like Chris Jericho. But after what I saw this week, I don't think that that guy belongs on TV right now. And I think he's getting paid a lot of money and Tony Khan's not getting his return on investment. Um there's like, but there's like, there's like 50 people that I would like let go, um, right away that they could just do without. Uh, absolutely. And then that would open up the floodgates to Indies and TNA bringing in more people and MLW bringing in more people and you know, New Japan getting access to more people. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, you know, you know, it's really bad when WWE does these big purges, but that actually becomes like helpful to some other promotions. Um, let's see. Io says, I feel like New Japan is relying on more of the AEW for their shows than previous. Uh, for, for their American shows, they are. Um, Tronzilla says, TK should send Hook and Wardlow to New Japan. Hell yeah, they should. I, You know, the Hook is another guy. Um, and I, look, and I've been tough on Hook, but he has, he has been in AEW for three years. He's got 55 matches. I think that's ridiculous. I'm pretty sure Sky Blue had 55 matches last year. Probably, probably double that, to be honest with you. You can't get better if you don't if you don't actually get out there and work and hustle. And the guy's got no hustle, and people are like, oh, he loses aura now. He doesn't have no fucking aura. He's got a haircut, does a couple suplexes that his dad used to do. I'm not impressed. Let him get out there and work. Um, get he's got to get better. He's never he's never gonna get better than he is right now if he doesn't get out there and hustle. He's not. He just isn't. He he is not one of those guys. Um, yeah, Dark Order release Dark Order. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Dark Order. Um, I also said Jericho had to work to Hook's level. Flat Jericho looked like shit this week. That's the worst I've ever seen Jericho look. I called him uh, Chris the Bruiser, he looked like Dick the Bruiser whenever he was like 50 years old in St. Louis Wrestling in like 1979, which you can see on TNA Plus now, or at least you could on Impact Plus back in the day. Um, Izzy McClure says Jericho's that old guy that will never retire no matter how awful. They just can't see it's happening to them. You know what? Like last, like a year ago, he was in shape. He looked really good a year ago. And then I think, I think, um, I think that whole thing with, um, with fake newsman, Nick Houseman, I think that whole thing got to him and it messed with him because ever since then he's looked worse and worse and worse. Um, and that could do something to your psyche. It really could. But the guy gained all the way back that he lost after he had that pulmonary embolism. You know, his doctor told him he needed to lose weight, and he did. And he looked great for a long time, and he looks like he gained it all back. And and he he looked like he wasn't safe in the in the ring. I I really I really thought I I thought that he did not look safe in the ring last night against Hook. I thought he was going to hurt Hook, and I thought he was going to hurt himself. And whenever he did the um, the springboard moonsault. I the lion salt. I was scared that he was gonna die, really. And then he he hit it like good, you know, kudos to him. He hit it, but I I thought I thought uh, I thought he looked terrible. To be honest with you, um. Now Scope says Hook works indies. I see him at uh, Northeast Wrestling. I mean, if if that's the case, good for him. But I, you know, he's been in AEW for three years. He's got fifty five matches. Scope. You know what I mean? Like I. That's not good enough for me. Like I, I agree. He, I think he needs to go on an excursion to Japan, and like, be you know, be like a young boy. Take a look at the improvements between him and Dominic Mysterio over the last three years, and people, people, people shit on Dominic Mysterio. Look, look at him now versus what he looked like three years ago. And the reason why he's gotten so much better is because they put him on every house show. He's working every single weekend. He never takes a day off. And he's another nep. And the reason why I compare the two is they're both nepotism hires. You know, like Dominic had no skills when he got hired. He was just a race kid. Same thing with same thing with Hook. He was just Taz's kid. Taz has a lot of respect, and he and he deserves that. And I, and I'm okay with nepotism hires as long as they're good. 
And then Hook's not a Hook's not bad, but I just haven't seen him get, get any better in three years. It's because he's got fifty five matches. He should be working every weekend. He should have like he should have like hundred matches a year. That's that's how you get better. Three three years in, look at some of the guys like from the eighties, what they look like three years in versus what Hook looks like three years in. Night and day, night and day. Buddy Landell three years in was way better than Hook. Buddy Landell never made it because he got you know, drink too much, but still, maybe that's a weird comparison. Comparison. Um, let's see. Vance says, I'm, I'm getting to it now, Vance. says, Hook uh, to send to New Japan, yes, because what the heck is this new character with the meaning of the name Hook? Yeah, well, I, you know, Hook because Taz is from Red Hook. That's what that's what that is. Um, uh, I operate Mike, the NBA fans on Twitter shamed Jericho years back. And hey, he looks like that again. He looks like that again. Um, and then uh, John Muse, uh, last comment to Muse, and then I got to go. Since AEW is protecting Hook very well and structuring his matches properly, but he does need a lot more work. Yeah, and that and that's what I'm saying. He, he doesn't, like, look bad, but I have not seen him look better. He looks the same. He looks the same today as he did three years ago. I have not seen him get any better. He's doing the same shtick for three years. And he was over when he first debuted. He was he was peaked. That word that he had is gone. We've seen everything he's got. The guy hasn't gotten any better. He needs to go away for a little while. Or he needs to he needs to make sure that he's working every single episode. Like I'm not talking like every week on Dynamite. No, he needs to work Dynamite, Collision, Ring of Honor. Like like if he works a full match on Dynamite, he needs to be doing a squash match the same manner Ring of Honor. Especially if he's not going to go out and like do a full indie schedule the way the Sky Blue is. Like I, I know Scope said that he worked in Northeast Wrestling, but like I've not, I've not seen him like do Wrestling Revolver and Prestige and all these other places that uh, like John Moxley's still doing. I haven't seen him do that schedule. That, that's what I'm talking about. I want to see him do that schedule. That's that's how you get better, you know. But um, and then okay, I'm gonna give the last one to to to, to Uncle Scope here, my boy Scope. He says, buddy worked every day. That is why the territories are missed. And that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm getting at. These, these, and I feel like I'm like I'm an old geezer when I say this, but these damn kids. <laughs> like you don't get better at something if you don't keep doing it. Right. Mike Tyson get ready to fight Jake Paul, right? At least I think it might it might be a real fight. It might not. He's gonna train for 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 let's let's just say it's eight rounds, right? Let's just say it's eight rounds. He's gonna train eight thousand rounds full spark. Right, it's probably not gonna take many shots to the head, but it's gonna be good, right? So if, if if he wants to be a top guy, he's got to do what the top guys have done, right? Look at what John Moxley is doing. Like if you want to, if you want that guy's spot, you need to go out there and do what he's doing. And I, and I always tell people too, like where I work, I'm a mass sergeant, right? Like I tell the young, it's like you want to be a mass sergeant, you need to go do some mass sergeant shit. Do what I do, and you can get where I'm at. You can take my job one day, right? That's that's same the same concept applies. You want to be an all pro in the NFL? Look at what the all pros are doing and do what they do. Right? Work as hard as they're working or outwork them. Outstudy them. Right? Same concept applies. Don't just show up at AEW every week and just figure out what you're doing and then that's the end and call it a day, which is what I see a lot of the AEW uh, roster doing. At least that's my perception of what they're doing. But all right, guys, uh, that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for everybody in the chat for helping me carry the show along. Um, hopefully, JD will be back next week, and I won't have to do a solo show. But I do solo shows every weekend. Um, and, in fact, I've done – I did I did Brace for Impact. I did um, – and I did an MLW show. So I did two I did two solo shows. Um, I did uh, Brace for Impact on Saturday and did MLW on Monday. And, no, and then I did I did a Motor City Machine Guns Breaking News audio like 30 minutes on, uh, on, on YouTube on Tuesday. So, um, and I'll be out this weekend again with, uh, some more, uh, impact news. I'm sure Dave will have some more on this, uh, the contract stuff with TNA. So brace for impact to be out on Saturday. Um, you can, you can hang out with me live on Patreon and check that out, or you can wait for it to get eventually kind of clipped on YouTube. But if you want the full thing, the full throttle, unedited, uncensored, a uh, boss to the wall, brace for impact. You can get that uh, on Saturday on Patreon. And then on Sunday, you can get overtime with Mike and JD. Hopefully, JD will be back on Sunday night. We'll do overtime. It's our Patreon-only show. Again, we clip it for YouTube, so make sure you're a subscriber to YouTube. We do the clips, but the full experience is uh, going to be on Patreon. Patreon.com slash the Mike and JD show. Make sure you are a subscriber to this channel. Hit that like button. 
Um, and uh, that's going to do it for me, guys. I really do appreciate everybody being here. And until next time, mahalo. Uh, 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 uh. Competition starting to get thick. It's the click, so I hope you watch your A game. A man, no way. From the track when we unite and spit. This isn't A game. Better bring your A game. Competition starting to get thick. It's the click, so I hope you watch your A game. A man, no way. From the track when we